Hello friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. I am Jenny and today you're going to tag along with me on this brisk, wonderful October morning. It is Thursday morning so the nursery is open. We have a couple of things going on today that I thought would be fun for you to tag along and to see how the day goes. The big news of the day is that the greenhouse crew is here. They got here last night <laughs> like 6 30 just in time to be able to put their eyes on the site and see it and drop off some tools they were here before the sun came up this morning and now we are waiting on the tractor trailer that has the greenhouse on it so that they can unload and start to assemble things it's very very exciting what we're going to do this morning is i'm just going to we got a couple of fun plant shipments back here can you see that da 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 and so I wanted to show those to you and kind of explain what they are. So let's do that first. So what we have here in the white boxes are some little tiny baby violas. So I thought it would be really fun to show you how they come to us and what they look like. So remember, excuse me, violas are um, fantastic for us, cool weather flowering plants so look at this we have a sweet customer of ours and he is a landscaper and one of his accounts is um, in uptown or downtown however you want to say it Charlotte and he has Bank of America and that's kind of wobbly sorry about that um, so he has the Bank of America account so we are going to grow let's see if I can get these out some violas for him that's not the proper way you never pull from the top here we go they're so tiny i just want to show them to you oh come on baby you want to pop them from the bottom but this is kind of hard to do we got one hand and my word all right hang on we're gonna set the camera up here all right there we go finally got it so look how t tiny this little thing is because it is Bank of America, they have requested to do a red, white, and blue theme. So we have reds and blues and white violas. So we will get these potted up ASAP and get them ready for Gary to use later on um, in the season. So that is what that is in those two boxes. And then in this fun box, let me move some things around. In this fun box is my bulbs from a Proven Winners. Yes, so Proven Winners is trialing to see how people will respond with them doing um, some spring flowering bulbs. So we did a social media post on this um, last week, I believe it was, and they have come. So they come, you know, whatever your order is, in these great mesh bags. This particular variety is a tulip and it is Parade. So can you see what beautiful size bulbs those are? When you get your spring flowering bulbs, they should be nice and firm. If they're squishy, they're not good. So there's multiple um, tulips in here. There's another one. Um, we'll, I'll throw up some of the pictures for you, but I wanted you to see what they look like. So this is a daffodil, Mount Hood. Again, beautiful bulbs in there. Um, and I know we have talked about this before. We're gonna talk about it again. When you live in the warmer zones, you have to be really careful about your tulip bulbs because tulips and other flowering annual, well, flowering bulbs need a period of cold weather our winters typically do not get cold enough for those um, bulbs to perform really well so what we have to do is pre-chill our bulbs pre-chilling bulbs basically is where you're faking out the bulbs to think that they've had gone through a long cold winter when actually they've just been hanging out in your refrigerator for 10 plus weeks now proven winners knows this and if you are in those warmer climates they will send you this great piece of paper that tells you exactly how to pre-chill your bulbs. So you can see that they tell you exactly who should pre-chill 
They say 7B to 10, which is us. Um, they also say how, um, what it, it means. Can you do it yourself? When do you do it? How do you do it? So forth and so on. So this is really important. So we will go ahead and get these sweet things into the refrigerator so they can begin to have their fake winter. And then what I do is I like to bring them out about mid-February and immediately plant them. So once you bring them out of the fridge and you're stopped, the pre-chilling process is over, then you want to go ahead and plant them immediately. You can plant them in the ground or you can plant them in a container wherever it is that you want to put them. Typically, I will put them a lot in containers um, and then they think that winter's over and then they begin their natural process and come up and do amazingly well. So I'm super excited about these bulbs. Of course, when it comes mid-February, we'll, we'll talk about that and show you exactly how to do that as far as planting. But right now, we're just gonna stick it in the fridge. You do have to be careful about some of the fruit, um, not putting it in there because fruit gives off a certain gas, which Anyway, Proven Winners goes through the whole thing and says exactly how to do that. Now what we're gonna talk about is an area that has honestly driven me crazy for a couple of years. Behind me, you will see what we call the cottage garden. In the cottage garden are two beds. There's one, trying to make you dizzy, and there is two. Right alongside our driveway, right below the garden boxes that you can see right here, and then there are the hydrangea hill up above it and this cottage garden is just a fun place where i can just have fun and i have perennials in there i'll put annuals in there it's, this is my fun place where there's no rules or rhyme to the reason why i plant things i mean there is some there is some plan but this is also where i can just have fun and put like lots of bold color in here now obviously it is the end of october november is just like days away it is about time to go ahead and start cleaning up this area we have not had a frost yet but we have had um, some low 40s even upper 30s so things are just kind of, you know it's done right they got planted in april it is done so what we're going to do i'm going to show you is the area that's really like <clears throat> Jenny shows you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and this certainly is the ugly. So no judging allowed. You just, it is what it is, and we're gonna fix it. So there you go. We all have these places that drive us insane, and this is definitely mine. So not this part. This is, of course, the cottage bed, the cottage garden bed, um, the whole area. Some things I've already started to pull out. Some, like that poor coleus, like it is just done. Um, it did great but it is, it's done. The cannas are still relatively going pretty strong. Um, come up here and you can see we have five of the garden boxes. <laughs> Amazel basil. I mean, is there anything else to say? Woo wee Now, what has driven me crazy for a very long time is this section right back here. This little hill, this little embankment that has the metal edging up top and then the black landscape fabric. Let me explain why it is the way it is. When we installed this bed, obviously you can tell that we're on a pretty big slope, right? So we um, put the landscape fabric here to keep it from washing and it does go underneath this decorative rock um, so that the rock doesn't go down into the mud and we don't lose it. Remember how I've always told you that landscape fabric will only work with um, weed control for so long? Well, there you go. Can you see those? Those are weeds. Even though this is rocks and there is landscape fabric underneath, yes, we still get weeds. Yes, they pull up really easy, but they're still here. This lovely section that has driven me crazy ever since we put it in is going to have um, the idea was that we were going to put the rocks like you can see right here just natural rocks that we have and we were going to line this whole little area with the rocks well I don't know I don't know how many years it's been three four years now and it's still not done so what we're going to do is get some of the same river rock that we used over at the patio and we're gonna line this. So that is coming very, very soon. Jerry and I were talking about last night and I told him, I said, I'm, I'm about to lose my mind. Also up here, we have fire lights back here in the back and then we have little limes. 
there is a couple of peonies and then the idea was to line this whole area with lavender some of it's done well some of it has not of course this time of the year it all looks bad but what we need to do is come in and land and see all of our um, hydrangeas then we are going to mulch it we are also going to um, get rid of the zinnias we're going to come in here and we're going to add irrigation lines because we still haven't done it remember when we were here and we planted the um, the roses of Sharon so I've got those we need to put that on irrigation you can see right here we still we do have the irrigation we just have to connect it that brown tube that's not a snake that's irrigation and then clearly take the weeds out I mean I told you this is ugly and I'm just showing you how it is folks down through the center of the fire lights and the little limes right down the center in the spring we are going to plant a hedge of edge of night hibiscus so this is one of proven winners and walter's gardens perennial summerific hibiscus it is called edge of night it is absolutely gorgeous dark foliage beautiful pink blooms on it so i think it'll be really fun to have a color contrast as far as the leaves go but then the flowers will of course complement the fire lights and the little limes really really well so that's what we're going to do and um, but we don't get those plants until like mid late April as bare roots and we have to grow them out so it'll be a little while but I know that that's the area that I want to do plant them in but for now we're going to land and see the current plants and install the irrigation that needs to be there and then mulch the whole thing because again I see this every time we drive up I see this outside of my kitchen window this is a high visibility area and it's driving me crazy now what we're going to do is i guess go ahead and head on over to the nursery and see what's going on over there but i do want to show you something real quick so we have had some beautiful fall colors some years you have great color some years you don't this year it has started to show us some really pretty colors of course the sun's coming up it's i don't know 8 30 and coming over the trees and showing us all their beautiful glory the crepe myrtles are changing the poplars um, the walnut trees my parents have a beautiful walnut field they're turning bright yellow um, we are supposed to get a lot of rain this afternoon which we desperately need because it has been so incredibly dry but we're going to head over to the nursery and see what's going on over there guess what's here can you see it back there the greenhouse has arrived and of course the crew left to uh go get some tools and the greenhouse is here on this great flatbed truck so jerry is directing them or the driver rather so that he can get in here and part and so the fun is going to begin to see how this beautiful greenhouse looks and we get it unloaded bless some of the drivers are very cautious when they come across which you know you can't really blame them but look at that <gasps> So now the fun begins of getting it unloaded and to see all the parts and the pieces and how they look. So this is going to be fun. So what we see here are the, um, basically all the pieces to the greenhouse. But you can tell that these guys, right, the triangles, that's the A-frame. So that's what the peak will be. There will be two of those peaks going down um but yeah Whoop. and he just went down some but nice big pieces nice good structure to it oh my goodness and of course you know what i'm thinking right <laughs> i'm so glad we don't have to put this thing together <laughs> we can just sit back and watch and ah, just enjoy it and not worry about it all right friends they're starting to get it unloaded you can see it behind me you will probably hear the bobcat um, jerry is back there supervising let's see there we go so there we have everything um, 
I don't know if you can tell Jerry, he is propped up against the barn. And they're gonna unload, I think, and start putting some stuff back here in the back. So let's go look at that. They've just now started, they actually decided to rent the equipment from us because we have it on site here and it's easier, um, probably better equipment than renting it from somewhere else. But you can see this is gonna take a little while to get all of this unloaded. They're working from the front of the truck to the back of the truck. I think they just unloaded the um, curtains for the sides and they've got the heaters and all the different components. Oh, I think they're gonna go straight for the middle now. Anyway, this is gonna be fun. So we'll just sit back and watch. As you can see, the greenhouse has been successfully unloaded and now we are getting the truck out of here. Sometimes, bless their hearts, they get a little panicky, but as long as they follow our directions, it works just magical. This poor fella got stopped by the DOT for an hour and a half this morning as they inspected his truck. So I'm running a little bit later behind than what they had anticipated, but they got everything unloaded. Most, well, some of it, if you can see through the woods, is right over there with a lot of it also up um, on the pad itself. So I think he's getting it now. He understands the situation. So we'll just watch him zoom out of here. friends so the greenhouse is here it is unloaded it is in a gazillion pieces but you know what i don't have to worry about it because our fantastic crew from georgia is here to put it all together so what they're going to do is just come on up here and um i guess start figuring out where they're going to put all their footers and start drilling and auging so that way they can get some posts in the ground and then start building up from there <laughs> All right, my sweet friends, it is after lunch and the rains have started to come here to Creekside, which on one hand I am very, very excited about because we have not had rain in a long time. Very long time. Things are very dry. But on the other hand, our construction crew fellas went back to the hotel because what they're gonna do next, their next step is to go ahead and drill all the holes, footers basically for the greenhouse. And we have a massive system headed our way and last thing you want to do is dig the holes and then they fill up with water yeah you don't want the holes full of water that you're getting ready to put concrete in so. no, no no so hopefully the 
rain will come through today, tonight, and by tomorrow, I think it's supposed to be clear. Maybe, I don't know, I saw it said rain. Well, I looked earlier, so I don't know what that means yet. We'll see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the camera around. Jerry is not mic'd up, but he's gonna, he's uh, working off of my mic, so he's gonna stay close to us. And we're gonna go through, just kind of give you the basics of what has happened already. So what they have done is you should be able to see, I think, the bright strings. Yeah, that pink line, purple line is really hard to see. Let's see if I get my hand. Okay, can you see that? So this is basically the corner of the greenhouse. So there is a pink line that is shooting down this side. I know it's really hard to see. You're gonna have to trust me on that. Then there is an orange line that shoots across right here. And I think they were lining it up for, with the pergola, is that correct? Yeah, but it, it had to come just a, a few inches or so forward because it's actually like so many inches longer than the other one. Gotcha. Because okay. Of that back corner back there. Because of this back corner where that green tarp is, that's our shortest spot and as far as the pad goes, but we have to kind of keep it that way because of there's not much room to go with that bank. So we can actually see it's even for us here, it's hard to see exactly where here is the pole yep so that's the back corner so you only have i mean we only have like a what yeah. a foot maybe two feet at the most so then you get into the french drain right there. then you get into the french drain and then what do they have what, i don't know what's underneath the tarp we don't know what's underneath the tarp it's a mystery but then in the boxes that would be heaters mm -hmm. heaters and then those are doors so if you look those are doors right there, which are basically the exact same doors that are on the production house, right? Yep. Yep. So it's been a good start to the process. Um, again, we're very excited that we're not the ones having to do it. One of the kids, I don't know if I already said this, things run together, but one of the kids had said, asked me, Mama, how are they gonna get off the truck? And I said, well, I'm not trying to be sassy, but it's not my problem. Don't have to worry about it. That's why you hire people to do it for you. So you don't have to worry about those kinds of problems, but it is raining and we're gonna go in and get us a nice hot, hot cup of coffee and enjoy our Thursday afternoon. Thank you so much for Gardening with Creekside. Y'all stay tuned for coming videos um, in the next really like what, two weeks. And we will take you along this whole entire process as this greenhouse is built. As always, y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.